You've just come from Syria and then Turkey and Jordan. Was there anything about your talks in Syria, particularly with President al-Assad, that changed your perception of the problems that we're facing? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, naturally, talking to people, especially somebody like that, will probably confirm a few things that you know and open other avenues for you. I talk to also to a lot of other people from the opposition, civil society. That certainly has helped uh, sharpen the picture I have of, uh, of, of Syria. Uh, but you, know, you, you still need to talk to a lot of other people, Syrians and non-Syrians, before you can <coughs> be really in a position to say that you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain of the ground I stand on. Uh, I don't think we are there yet. What is the picture that's emerging of Syria? What's your biggest concern at the moment? You know, the, the point I am, I am making uh, as uh, seriously, strongly as I can is that the situation is very bad and worsening. It's not improving. Uh, Syrians on both sides say from time to time we are going to win uh, you know, very soon or in three months or two months. Or uh, <coughs> I don't think it's true. I don't think any side is winning now or any time in the future. The situation is getting worse. Uh, and it is a huge threat for, for, the, for the region. Uh, these kind of conflicts cannot be bottled up within one country. They will invariably spill over. They already have with these uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of refugees that are you know, destabilizing or threatening to destabilize neighboring countries. So this is the main point I'm trying to make, uh, so that Syrians and their different friends uh, realize how serious the situation is and how important it is to pull uh, all uh, you know, forces to help the country solve its problems because before it's too late. This is the, the main point I'm making. Um, I am also making the same point that Kofi Annan was making. You know, you, you, have, you have one track, one uh, uh, line, as, if you like, of, of mediation and of trying to solve this problem. I think everybody should uh, support that track. Uh, you don't need several tracks for, 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 uh, you know, for situations like, a situation like this. I'm going to, to New York, uh, I, will, I, will, I will convey this message again uh, to the Security Council and to all the people that I'm going to meet. And are they willing to listen? I mean, you've now had talks with Chinese, the Russians, an Iranian envoy. Are they realizing the seriousness of this? I think so. I think so. Um, I think, you know, the only fact that uh, foreign ministers uh, feel that they have to call me, take the responsibility of calling me uh, from their various capital, and also to agree to see me in New York uh, next week. I think this is in itself is an indication that they are realizing that this is important. This is, this is important and urgent. Uh, let's hope that the next step is to see how they can get together uh, and, 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 and support a plan that we can put out. You know, I, I tell people that I have no plan. I don't. But it's not, it's not uh, uh, impossible to work out one uh, if there is uh, you know, a willingness to listen and, and, and work together. Are there any parameters right now as to uh, that kind of plan that might emerge? Could it include the Syrian president, for instance? It will include him necessarily. 
uh, how you see the the thing is you know uh, you know you've got to go into this from what is certain to the things that n that that need to become certain as you go along what is certain is that this is a very serious crisis what is certain is that uh, 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 you know talking about reform is is not uh, is not the right thing to do anymore. Now you've got to talk about change. Uh, and change has to be serious and uh, profound. I don't know what kind of qualifications you want to give it, but change has to take place. And it has to, you know, ideally, you want that change to take place in an orderly manner so that you don't repeat what happened in Iraq. And you don't repeat what happened in Libya. So you, you would like, you know, you, you would want an orderly development, a, a change that, is, that, that really responds to the legitimate aspirations of the people of Syria. Does that change necessarily include a change in leadership? Well, you know, you know this is uh, not something that you want to discuss on television before you discuss it with, uh, with, uh, with, with the interested parties inside Syria and also around Syria. Uh, but I think you know, everybody knows, and I said this to everybody, uh, what is needed is, is change. It must be serious. And uh, the earlier, the better. It's really difficult to tell, as it was in Iraq, who speaks for the Syrian people. How much credibility does the external opposition have, for instance, do you think? You know, I, I, you know I'm, I, I'm the last one who can or should pass judgment. Uh, the Syrian people is diverse. You know, there is a very rich diversity. and. Politically, also, it is very diverse. So you have all sorts of uh, expressions and so on. There is no doubt that uh, you know you ca that, uh, people cannot go on uh, speaking uh, as tiny little groups. Ultimately, you've got to have uh, you know the, the Syrian people represented by two, three, four parties, not not by not by two hundred. Uh, but I will not pass judgment on any you know, external or internal uh, opposition. Uh, I've been talking to quite a few of them. I will talk to more. Uh, and I hope that together we can, we can put together something that, uh, that will work. Did you feel in your visit that you were able to get a sense of what was going on on the ground, given the security restrictions? And your I think so. I'm sure I have still a lot to learn, uh, but the little I have, so I have seen, the little I have heard, and I have heard much more than I have seen, you know, confirms that thing which becomes perhaps boring, that the situation is extremely bad and getting worse. Uh, a lot of people have died. A lot of people are dying every day. Uh, thousands of people have been arrested. Some people put it at 30,000 are in jail. Um, you know, the, the, the cities have been destroyed, uh, or large parts of the city of cities have been have been destroyed. Sanctions are biting and are affecting the, the people. And I don't know what else, you see. Uh, 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 the situation is, is not improving you know, uh, at all. So that much I have seen. Uh, people are you know, trying to put ideas and, uh, and, uh, uh, and projects, and uh, you know, some people want uh, elections, other people want negotiations, other people don't want negotiations. Uh, so, you know, all that has got to 
come together to, uh, uh, to into a, some kind of rational, uh, uh, credible uh, process. Is it getting worse because there is, in a sense, a military stalemate in some places? It is, it is worse because people are being killed and the country is being destroyed. Uh, artillery, you know, in Damascus you hear uh, day and night the sound of uh, big guns uh, in, 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 in the suburbs of, of, of Damascus. Uh, I, th I think that uh, Aleppo is much worse. Uh, Homs is not getting really better. Uh, Idlib and I don't know, you know all, all sorts of places are, are suffering. Uh, you know, some people will tell you, I mean, look, this, the, the center of Damascus is quiet. People are going around, um, you know, about their business. That's true. Uh, that, but, but that is that is not uh, significant, and that is not the important thing in Syria today. The important thing is these guns that are, you know. Uh, uh, being used uh, uh, 24 hours a day, uh, this, uh, I mean, this fighting that is taking place, uh, it, it does look like stalemate, uh, but you know, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a static stalemate. It is a stalemate where people are dying and, and, and uh, property is being destroyed. How concerned are you about foreign interference in Syria, whether it's weapons believed to be coming from some of the other countries in the region or Iranian advisors on the ground? The Secretary General of the United Nations, practically every time he speaks about Syria, says uh, weapons must be stopped. I mean, uh, uh, we must stop the flow of weapons into Syria. Um, each side will say, you know, we, you know, we are receiving uh, weapons to defend ourselves. Uh, but I, I suppose that uh, at some stage, some, you know, the people who are sending in weapons will have to also come around and say, you know, as part of uh, a, a, a settlement, that has got to stop. You don't like deadlines, but at what mm. point would you would you assess that it's not worth continuing your mission? What would have to happen for you to make that decision? I don't know. Uh, you know, as long as you know, I'm I'm just beginning. It's not a month yet. Uh, I will not stay one day beyond. You know, if I if if. I mean, God forbid, I realize that I cannot go any further. I will, I will stop and, 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 and give up. But as long as there is any hope that we can, we can help uh, in any way uh, possible, we will continue. Before you took the job, you said you would need the support of the Security Council. Do you believe you have the support you need? Uh, I have the support of every member of the Security Council separately. Uh, it will be good to have it collectively. Uh, I, I think that it will it will happen. Uh, you know, I mean, they they are inviting me to to address them next week, uh, and this is one of the things we are going to discuss. You see, you know, I'm I'm nothing if I'm not their man. Uh, so if they want me to be their man, they will have to support me clearly and uh, openly. I remember in Iraq, you came and you warned about the prospect of civil war long before civil war there was on anyone's mind. Sure. Is it now a full-fledged civil war in Syria? What will remain of Syria? You see, you know, understandably, people who are involved in something like this will take a long time before they accept that they are in civil war. And I remember perfectly well what I said in Iraq. I think it was in April 2004. I said, you know, nobody is going to say, tomorrow I'm going to start a civil war. 
Civil wars happen because, you know, in Lebanon, it was a bus that was attacked that started the civil war. Uh, so you have one incident, and then two, and then three, and then 10, and then 30. And one day, everybody recognized that there is a civil war. When a neighbor kills a neighbor, when soldiers turn the, their guns against their fellow soldiers, <laughs> what, what do you call that? So that is why I'm saying, you know, don't say we want to prevent the civil war. Say we want to stop the civil war before it becomes unstoppable. Uh, so I think, yes, we are in a situation of civil war, uh, but it, it can be stopped. And the earlier we really all start working on that, the better. Regarding the refugees, you've now toured the refugee camps. Yeah. What's your feeling about the state that the refugees are in and what seems to be a shifting pattern, more vulnerable people coming across to sure. Jordan, for instance? You see, this is, uh, I, I came to see this as part of, you know, sensing the situation and seeing all, all, all that constitutes this, this, this conflict. But uh, to tell you the truth, I'm terribly embarrassed when I go there. You know, you like, you look like a voyeur. Uh, you come for uh, one hour or two hours. Uh, it's, I was terribly, terribly embarrassed and unhappy. Uh, you know, I, I, in, in Turkey, I met some very highly educated people who must be, you know, terribly frustrated, unhappy, even ashamed. Of, of being at the mercy of, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're like beggars. It's not a, a nice situation to be in. And then you see somebody coming to look at you uh, as if you were in a zoo. It's terribly embarrassing, terribly, terribly embarrassing. And, you know, I, I'm, some people were angry in, in both in, in Turkey and here. You know, a young man in Turkey told me, Please tell me, are we human? I, I had no answer. Here, you know, we saw a few people, there were thousands who had something to say. And of course, you couldn't even listen to them. So, uh, you know, whereas it's important and necessary to be able to tell everybody, you know, this is what what I saw, this is what refugee camp is, this is what the situation of refugees is. And the other than, you know, on the other hand, on, on a personal basis, it, it, is, it is terribly embarrassing. Is it potentially destabilizing as well, the number of refugees of course, coming? Of course. Uh, Turkey has spent, until now, $300 million on the refugees. I mean, you know, I, I think we should be thankful to them. Uh, I'm not sure whether anybody is helping them. Jordan doesn't have that kind of resources. And they have much more refugees. And until now, the international community has not been that uh, 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 generous. I, I was told today that these tents could be replaced with uh, prefabricated uh, 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 lodgings, or I don't know how it's called, uh, uh, with $60 million for 80,000 refugees. And these uh, kind of prefabricated houses can be taken back because these people, when they return, their houses have been destroyed, most in, 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 in many cases. $60 million. Uh, you know, can be given by, I, I was going to say, almost by anybody. So perhaps I, I can make an appeal through your channel, especially to people in our region, $60 million to give a decent uh, 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 shelter to the refugees that are in Jordan for the winter that is coming, uh, whereas the tents you know, have to be renewed. The, uh, the tent, co uh, tent costs only $500, but it has to be replaced every four months. 
uh, uh, you know, a prefabricated unit uh, costs four thousand dollars. So for the eighty thousand people that are, uh, you know, put, I think already here or coming into into Jordan, you need sixty sixty million dollars. It can it can be given by almost any government. You've called this mission nearly impossible. Have you ever faced anything so difficult? Uh, well, yes. I mean, Lebanon looked just as difficult. Uh, Iraq was horrible, absolutely horrible. Because Iraq was a country that has been aggressed, invaded by uh, a big, uh, I mean, the biggest power on earth together with, I mean, the United States, together with Britain and a lot of other countries. But this is, this is extremely difficult. It is very, very difficult. Uh, you know, probably also because one has come into it very early on, uh, when, uh, you know, things are, are becoming worse by the day. Uh, so, yeah. Did I face something as difficult? Uh, it's you know, the thing you are doing is always the most difficult. Let's put it this way. Mm. Dr. Brahimi, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you very much.